Okay, so Rich and I are sitting down to kind of talk about what adventures we want to do in the next couple months. So dude, I had a crazy idea. So <laughs> I think we should go buy sandboards. <laughs> So, sandboard, like meaning actually snowboarding on sand. Yeah, I was watching some YouTube videos of sandboarding and it looked pretty cool. And I think, like, because we have some, here in Utah, we have some awesome sand dunes, like, like super cool spots yeah. to go, yeah. big dunes, like Sand Mountain out in Little Sahara is a, this huge it's sand huge mountain. mountain. <laughs> I actually, that actually is scary, to be honest with you, because I don't know how well you can turn. <laughs> with, the, with the sandboard, but we're gonna find out. That's a good idea. Yeah, I've, I've never done it, so. Dude, so that's one thing we should do. We need to go sandboarding. What are some other things? Well, if we're going sandboarding, that means you gotta buy a dirt bike. I know, so so Sam loves dirt biking, so which one do you like more, snowboarding or dirt biking? Let's put you on the spot. See, that one's difficult. To be honest with you, <laughs> they both have a special place in my heart, but. Bah, that's a cop out answer. Yeah, it is totally <laughs> I love you both. So, yeah. <laughs> the same. The same. That's what you tell your kids, right? But it, at the end of the day, that's hard because snowboarding has such a limited uh, season. So here in Utah, we get three, maybe four months, and some years it doesn't get a lot of snow. So you know what that that's means true. is that I'm in depression all winter. And well, that just makes epic snowboarding out in the desert, though, right? Yeah. Well, if we can, if it, if we'll find out, we could probably <laughs> just see video of us eat, eating it over and over again. But so for me, it's like the, the the what I can do on a dirt bike here, where we live in Utah, is I can dirt bike year round. So for the bang for the buck, I feel like I get more out of dirt biking, you know. But that's not to say that I don't enjoy them over the uh, each other just if you're just thinking about it logically about how much return and how much volume you can go to things with a dirt bike i can dirt bike all year because we could go clear down into southern utah and you have no snow down there uh, usually we do a winter trip and so forth so yeah and for you like your hobby's always just been snowboarding and i've always been joking it was like snowboarding and, and working and so we're trying to get you to <laughs> venture know, out and do other hobbies right? But, but here's the thing so sam's been trying to talk me into buying a dirt bike for years but for years. but here's the question sam how many dirt bikes do you have in your garage right now? Uh, we're gonna do a pan of that. I have, have five dirt bikes. <laughs> Why do I need to not buy a dirt bike? I have. There's does, only two full size does, bikes. Dude, the other ones are not does, full size. Does John still have a dirt bike? He does still. Have my a dirt my bike. brother John has a dirt bike, and he never rides it. So, that's in true. fact, when I do go riding with you, I usually just ride. It. In the past, I've just yeah, ridden his bike. That's true. But I want Richard to buy a dirt bike so that we can go through showing you guys like the experiences of how to get into biking so if you ever wanted to know we're going to do a whole video series on like how to you know what dirt bike you should get what gear you should get you know and just give you any insight that i've learned over the you know the 10 plus years that i've been dirt bike. i'm no expert about by all means but um it's just something i'm really passionate about so and then also with sandboarding like neither of us have done that so yeah, i don't even I know where to buy a <laughs> buy a board or which board to buy so we'll talk through that to, experience be, to be continued on that yeah, one exactly but so we're not going through this list very fast the other thing i did so i just bought a camper uh not expensive one a used one i bought a big old camper and we're gonna go camping next weekend which uh i love the outdoors but camping is not Something I've always loved. Well, that's for because some reason. that's because camping for us growing up was getting on a, getting on a horse and riding <laughs> thirty miles in one day, and then sleeping in a bedroll on the ground and freezing to death. That was camping for us. <laughs> so my wife's a city girl, and when I married her, she's like, oh, "I like camping," and so I'm like, "Great, let's go camping." And my dad. Uh, my sister wanted to go on a pack trip up in the winter in Wyoming. It's an awesome area. Anyway, so I'm like, yeah, let's go. And so we went on this pack trip. Like, it was in it, September, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in September. Anyway, sometimes it can be amazing weather, but it snowed on us every day. <laughs> every morning we woke up to a couple inches of snow. Needless to say, my wife is never doing that again. <laughs> so that's why you bought a camper. So camper. So I'm going to go on lots of camping trips. And, I, you know, as part of that, though, I do want to get a dirt bike. Yeah, and you know, with uh, like Richard said, is we want to also introduce their camping, dirt biking. It doesn't have to cost a ton of money. You can figure out how to do it effectively, and we'll kind of talk through that. You know, and obviously, our our goal is always, you know, buy the best gear you can afford, and 
you know, don't put it on a credit card or anything like that. I just try to figure out how to, to pay for, for it so that you can continue to do other ventures. Well, and just like with my campus, uh, great example is I, you know, I could afford uh, to go out and buy a new camper just fine, right? But I didn't, I kind of bought an old ghetto camper for a lot cheaper because I want to try it out. Yeah. You know, so, so like for instance, if you've never gone dirt biking, don't go buy a new KTM unless you're just loaded and who cares. Right. But go buy a kind of a crappy bike, see if you like it. And if you like it, then upgrade later. You yeah. know, so that's my philosophy. Or same with a snowboard. You don't need a brand new Custom X, you know, or yeah, whatever. Seriously. I mean, they are pretty cool and I would highly suggest it. But. There's one on my the wall right yeah, there. So, you know, anyways. But. I that's another thing, and then we'll we'll do topics about that as well as like the secrets of, of buying dirt bikes or yeah. campers or like when to buy. Like for example, well, I bought my Custom X as a leftover, so I got it like well, you just, fifty well, percent. You off. just barely bought a board. You got like a crazy deal on that. So the a board up here, the Burton flight attendant. Um, I've been because we went uh, hellboarding this year, and I was like, you know, I, I've been riding a Burton Antler, which is like a it's a. It's got a flying V, you know, um, camber on it, and it's a pretty good floating board. But I was like, I want more of like a hardcore powder mountain board. So I started looking on our local, uh, you know, classified listings, and there was a, a guy that was selling his board for like it was a 2019 flight attendant. It was 156 inch, 156. It was the exact size for my weight, and so. I called him up and he's like, yeah, like I'm selling for 300 bucks. And, and I was like, okay, well I'll come look at it. I was like, maybe it's trashed or something. I get there and he's holding it and it has no scratches on it. And he's like, like, and I was like yeah, I was like, what? So I was like, what's going on? He's like, it's, it's like, I've, I, it's just too big for me. And I wrote it once. So I literally gave him the 300 bucks and ran out of the door. <laughs> I like felt bad because it's like such a good deal, but that that's one way of doing it. So you don't have to spend six, $700 on a new board. So. The other thing we haven't even talked about is is our heliboarding trip. Where are we going to go heliboarding? Well, you dropped a little teaser in one of them saying that we're going to go to Washington. Oh, well, I said I've been looking around and there's a place in Washington that looks kind of cool. So I didn't say Washington. So we we failed heliboarding. And so what we do with heliboarding, for me, it's like I just start putting money aside each month, a couple hundred bucks to, to pay for it, right? Uh, you know, you can just, if you have the means to be able to, for me, it's like my man money, right? That I just pocket away to kind of help save that, that I can pay for it. And I do side hustles. Like I'm a serial entrepreneur and Richard is the same way as we're just constantly trying to figure out ways to make money. So those, I use that money to kind of fund my little adventures, but we failed at Whistler. When we went to Whistler, it rains. We haven't been there. And We're not going back. It was horrible. The ski Nothing resort, against Whistler. The ski just, resort just, was amazing. So if we do cold. that, we'd go back to the ski resort, but not necessarily to Heli. Because it just there, we found the interior BC is better. So we've done interior BC, which is probably the Dude, I kinda, industry standard. I, I, like, I almost want to go back, though, well, and like, try... Like, like go south a little bit because we were up in the Revelstoke area yeah. and just south there's some uh, cool areas like that's where like Travis Rice rides yeah, a lot. Right. Well, and we've done Idaho and we've done Utah. We tried to do Telluride but we got grounded and then Richard got hurt one year. We were going to go to yeah. Telluride. So we, we haven't made it to Colorado yet uh, on that. So I don't know. We'll have to do some research. By the way, California does not allow heliboarding at all. Really? Yeah. You cannot go heliboarding in California. Why? Uh, regulations. They don't let them on the public land, I think. Jeez, Anyways. that's crazy. Um, I'm not sure why, so someone knows. But uh, I just found that interesting. So never will we go heliboarding in California. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get sandboards. <laughs> and go do adventure on that. Let's go hella sandboarding. That's true. Well, <laughs> Sand Mountain, we were actually joking about this. We were trying to figure out how to get on top of Utah's Little Sierra. Sand Mountain is a really, really tall mountain of sand. And, you know, usually guys are in like sand rails or, uh, uh, you know, I could ride my dirt bike up there with a paddle tire, but it's super I'm not steep. riding on the bike. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So we're like, how are we going to get up there? Well, just to have someone... Uh, That's right. Hell just yeah. go hella sandboarding. <laughs> Anyways. Um, 
But yeah, yeah, we need to figure out where we're going to go next year. That's, we'll stay tuned for that. We haven't even talked about that. If you guys have any suggestions for us, yeah, if you've been to any of these heli boarding places, hit us, hit us up in the comments. Let us know. We'd love to hear your suggestions if you found some pretty rad places to go heli. So what else do we want to do this summer? So for me, summer just is mostly camping and dirt biking, but... Uh, what's going to push you? That's what I was going to say. What's going to push you a little channel, bit? This channel, we need to figure out. So um, what else can we do? You know, I we could do rafting. We could go do... Dude, I went rafting down the Hoback in Jackson Hole. And do you feel like you're going to die? The water It was, was so too cold, stressful. Gonna... Like... It, it was fun. I was so stressed out the whole time. And I don't know if it was just our raft guide. It was a friend, so it wasn't like an official raft guide. And it was it was kind of a, a yeah, probably a bad idea. Um, but it was it was a more intense day. And the, I think she was really nervous. And so, like, I was freaked out the whole time. <laughs> I, yeah. And I'm Actually, really... I, I, went to, I went rafting in Costa Rica. And that was pretty fun. And the second time I wasn't, it wasn't as bad, even though... <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> the other thing we may want to do is, so I want to go dirt bike camping. So it's not what you think it is. I want to take backpacks and ride into somewhere and camp from my dirt bike. What do you do for gas? You could, you have to pack it. Well, a, a gas tank on like an enduro model or um, an off-road model, usually you can get about 60 to 80 so miles. So I'll let you tank. carry the gas in your backpack. Well, no, you do. You do. <laughs> and your backpack smells no, like This gas. is something we'll figure out. We'll show. A There's new ways to do it. Clone. There's a way to like gas, for gas a week. to your bike. Well, you don't do it like we, we probably would put in as many miles as we normally would, um, like an all day ride. We just ride in, you know, four hours and then chill and do just a, maybe two days. That would be cool, though. I just try that. Uh, the other thing um, I really want to do is I want to hike Mount Nebo. Dude, I, I wanted to do that. So maybe, and I know with this year, Utah has had a really crazy snow year, so we're not going to get up on top of Nebo. Well, maybe we, yeah, until later in the year. That'd be cool. Let's, let's put that down on our list, All right. what we're going to do. We're going to go hike Mount Nebo. The other thing, I don't know if we're going to do it this year, but we need to go down to Chile or Argentina and go snowboarding in the Andes one summer. Yeah, we do. And, you know, there's a, I used to snowmobile a lot, but with my kids, I've kind of, you can't have, the pro, part of this problem is we have a lot of hobbies. I, actually, right? I got him out of snowmobiling. And back into snowboarding. And back into snowboarding. It's true. It's true. And, and snowmobiling is a lot of fun. pleased about that. Eventually, I'll get back into that. But um, there is there is a, uh, Chris Brandt that does a, he goes down to Chile every year and takes people like we could go and go snowmobiling. It's not snowboarding. I'm not, but, I'm not snowmobiling. Well, you, I'm snowboarding. We will try snowboarding first, but we're going to go back and do the <laughs> the snowmobiling thing eventually. But that's it's that would be really cool. That would be really fun. Yeah. If you guys have any suggestions of what we should do, let us know. We're up for trying things. Oh, you were, one thing you mentioned the other day. We should. So we could go dirt biking. We should go like um, mountain biking. I wanted to call it pedal biking, but mountain biking. <laughs> yeah, Utah actually has a, is some a cool stuff. Pretty cool place for mountain biking. And growing up, we never could afford like a, a mountain bike. We had some huffy BMX Dude, bike. No, mom found my bike at the dump. Brought it. it really did. Brought, brought it home. It was and like fixed green. It up. And I rode that for the next like four years. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So.